Are you ready to start? Great. So, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I would like to welcome you to the Research and Innovation Days and more particularly to our today's session, which is called Synergy Labels, a catalyst for additional funding. Now, what is this all about? Let me first start by reiterating the messages we have just got in the introductory remarks of our Commissioner and uh, our Director General. The purpose of these Research and Innovation Days is really to bring you together to have your saying and your input to the design of the next framework program for research and innovation, Horizon Europe. So this is really the overarching purpose of this event, that we exchange, that we discuss what should be the priorities for research and innovation over the coming years. When it comes more specifically to the purpose of our session on synergy labels, the background or the main purpose is to find out how we can maximize the impact of excellent research by combining different resources of funding, in particular at the European level. Why do we need to uh, maximize the impact of excellent research and innovation projects? Mainly because the lack of funding does not permit us to fund all the excellent projects. And many of you, amongst you here today, have experienced with this, have experienced with this. But it's not only about changing the source of funding, providing different sources of funding in the context of synergies. It's also about to create, in particular in our case, downstream downstream uh, synergies between funding from the framework program and then funding through the structural fund program. So we will have examples today how these instruments that are perceived or conceived to maximize the impact of excellent research projects in Europe will work in practical terms. Just if you have the examples later from the joint undertakings dealing with clean sky and with bio-based industries, you will see that these are areas, domains, which are, which are part of our all overall endeavor to uh, achieve a climate neutral Europe in 2050. And we can just simply not afford not to use these excellent research projects which have not sufficient funding, or whether, where we need to provide complementary funding to achieve these objectives. So this is the purpose of today's meeting. Now I will introduce shortly the participants of our today's session. Uh, Magda Di Carli, I got it right. She's <laughs> laughing because I always call her Carla De Magdi. <laughs> so uh, that's not the right thing. So she is head of unit for the unit dealing with ERA and uh, the country intelligence. country intelligence. Axel Krein is the executive director of the joint undertakings Clean Sky. Uh, Stefania Curceru is uh, associate director in the European Bank for uh, uh, Reconstruction and Development. And Philip Mengal, he's an uh, executive director in our joint undertaking bio based industries. So I propose that we listen to their experiences, and then <coughs> it's up to you to raise questions, questions relating to the synergy labels, but also questions to the topics, to the substance the colleagues are dealing with, and uh, so that we can get your feedback as how we should design the next framework program for research and innovation, in particular when it comes to the definition of the research topics. So I would like to ask uh, Magda <laughs> to start with her uh, seal of excellence. Yes. She will present us the experiences yeah. under the seal of excellence. Okay. 
So thanks, Wolfgang, and, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, mm, so Wolfgang has explained uh, extremely well why uh, it's important to valorize these uh, good projects uh, that have been making the effort to, to submit their proposal. So they have invested money to write the proposal. To they have uh, had the courage to eventually compete internationally. And then, unfortunately, just because of lack of funding, uh, eventually they were not uh, taken on board by the program. And they deserve, in fact, uh, kind of a second chance, because they are excellent projects. I will focus uh, my presentation on the process we have been using in order to put in place the seal of excellence, because I think uh, there are some issues that it's interesting to, that, uh, that are key when uh, we, we embark uh, in this idea of uh, having a synergies label, because there are things that need to be taken into account in order for the process to be successful and not to raise uh, expectations that are eventually dis disappointed. Uh, we started with the seal of excellence, uh, uh, in fact, uh, in 2000. 15, but uh, the basis was uh, a declaration uh, of the Commission at the moment of uh, um, adoption of Horizon 2020, where in fact it was explicitly mentioned that prog uh, projects uh, that are uh, issued by the SME instrument, but also Maris Lodowska Curie, ERC grants and collaborative grants, they uh, which have not been funded just because there was not enough budget, they are still excellent projects. This was a declaration and it remained there without uh, for the moment, uh, a concrete implementation. At the moment, I was uh, running a unit uh, that was dealing with uh, encouraging synergies with the structural funds. And then we looked uh, at, the, for instance, the SME instruments and what were the, the logic of intervention eventually of uh, funds in order to, to provide alternative sources. And in fact, we saw that, especially for the SME instruments, uh, the structural funds had kind of the same logic of intervention. They were SMEs, they were close to the market, they were mo mono beneficiaries. So we decided to launch uh, this uh, seal of excellence in order to help these companies to find alternative funding. So for the project to make, uh, in fact, uh, an impact, uh, still an impact, and to be implemented. But we didn't do it uh, unilaterally. So we did in collaboration with other colleagues uh, from DG Regio. We went, we explained the concept, and we said, do you think that eventually structural funds can be mobilized for that? So the first thing is, in fact, uh, that we need uh, to involve the alternative funding eventually that we want to mobilize, exactly not to raise expectations that eventually cannot be met. Then we were, uh, when we explained to the regions that this was a possibility for them to put in place this type of uh, schemes to support the seal of excellence, we provided, in fact, uh, in a, a community of practice to exchange practices on how to better do it. And this was very interesting because uh, we had the information from the ground on what could be the bottlenecks and the difficulties. And we were deb uh, then able to, one by one, to try to tackle them through extra support from our services. Then there were uh, the information, related, the, the, the support needed in terms of information to be diffused. So once again, we went back to our program and to make it sure that we are able to transfer this information uh, regarding the seal of excellence. And then lately, we went as well uh, to see amongst the bottlenecks, for instance, was the idea of the uh, state aid and explaining exactly what was the idea behind the seal of excellence in terms of SME instrument, the specific characteristics of the SME instruments. We were able to start a dialogue as well for the simplification of state aid. So there are a lot of issues that uh, we are covering uh, and uh, they were taken into account in the process. So we are now issuing uh, around 10,000 uh, seal of excellence since the start of the program, since 2014. And we have uh, 41 uh, pro programs, uh, both at national or regional level, that have been uh, engaged uh, in supporting the seal of excellence, mobilize, mobilizing a relative important amount of money for that uh, to provide alternative funds. So this is in fact uh, something that was the results of a process uh, that had uh, a number of uh, key points that I think it's important always to take into account uh, when we set up this type of labels. First of all, uh, the clarity on what the seal and the, the synergy labels eventually is about, what we are certifying. The feasibility, so trying to always uh, try to see with the uh, alternative funding whether there is a space uh, to accommodate eventually funding uh, for this. And I think later on we will see, we 
with the ABRD as well, what has been the, the logic and also with the memorandum of understanding from Clear Sky. Uh, we have to assist the seal holder, manage expectation and help them in raising the visibility. So this is our experience for the moment. Uh, we started in 2015 where it was just a, a, piece, a, a declaration. It has become something important and now is in a, a number of um, of uh, regulation uh, and we have achieved uh, some uh, interesting support measures for that. So I think if it's built uh, step by step and in cooperation with the interested services, uh, these are in fact uh, um, initiatives that can help. And uh, so my best wishes as well for the uh, other similar initiatives to be, to be in fact successful to mobilize alternative funding. So that's it for me. Thank you very much, Magda, for <laughs> your presentation. I think it's, it was really a groundbreaking work that you have undertaken under the leadership and guidance of our Commissioner Medash, who did not like at all that so many excellent projects under the uh, uh, SME instrument in particular could not get funding. So it is no surprise that the national uh, funding organizations in despite as to whether they have used structural funds or state aid, were at the beginning not so keen to fund a foreign baby, if you want. But I think the success that you have indicated that at least 41 programs already today provide funding for projects that are excellent. Excellent because they have the, the, uh, the label of excellent European peer review uh, really shows that um, there has been a buy in this philosophy, also in particular because, as you have pointed out, the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, intervention logic under the SME instrument and the smart specialization strategies of the uh, uh, regions of the member states are very similar. Now, I think we will have the example of the joint undertaking uh, Clean Sky, as you know, the um, overarching objective of the Clean Sky Public-Private Partnership is to uh, reduce noise and CO2 emissions of, uh, of airplanes, a topic that is quite at the core of our discussions on, on a climate-neutral Europe. And I think um, Axel has already the electric uh, airplane in his pockets, at least uh, <laughs> how it should look like. <laughs> but uh, so Axel, give us your examples <clears throat> as to how you create synergies between uh, the funding under the joint undertaking and in particular in the smart specialization strategies of regions of member states. Please, Axel. Thank you, Wolfgang. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to give you some concrete examples based on the uh, uh, explanation of the synergy labels uh, which have been uh, just done before. But maybe just one more word on uh, Clean Sky. Wolfgang has explained already that we have uh, the main target, uh, our environmental objectives, uh, minus 20 to 30 percent CO2, noise and NOx, uh, and the competitiveness of the European landscape in the aviation context. Um, we have roughly uh, 800 different entities working in Clean Sky, uh, universities, uh, research organizations, uh, as well as SMEs and, and, and bigger industry companies. So around 5,000 scientists and engineers uh, working on Clean Sky. And it's not just the technology behind, but also the, the engineering community. So we are uh, also ensuring that the, the knowledge base in Europe, and that was uh, perfectly elaborated in the uh, discussion which we had just before with uh, Commissioner Moedas uh, and Jean-Henri Paquet, where the, the competence, the European competence elevation uh, is an important element of research and innovation as well. We are working together with the European uh, regions and also member states uh, in uh, supporting them in their smart specialization strategies. Um, and you see here a map uh, of uh, the uh, region, respectively countries, we have been signing MOUs with. So we have at the moment uh, 18 bilateral memoranda of understanding uh, which have been signed. And you see here uh, it goes from uh, Portugal uh, to Romania, uh, from uh, Greece uh, up to Sweden, so covering uh, the whole of uh, Europe. Um, and we are, as you can see, not just connecting to the 
I would say, conventional and established aeronautics uh, countries and regions in Europe, uh, but also we are connecting with regions in the newer member states um, because also they can provide significant competence uh, to it. And we are not just looking at the existing aeronautical competence, but also at competence uh, which can be made accessible to the aeronautics uh, environment in, in, in Europe. I'd like to highlight a couple of points here. Um, we have at the moment uh, 35 uh, complementary projects uh, in existence, um, and they are funded by ESIF, by European Structural and Investment Funds. And you see here the volume is 50 million euros uh, on top of our funding, which we receive from the European Commission anyway. The scenarios go, it's, it's a, quite a wide range of scenarios from upstream research on innovation topics uh, and local capacity building somewhere where maybe there is little capacity at the moment uh, to very, very complementary projects to clean sky at the moment um, and which are more demonstrator, more downstream focused. Um, and those projects are sometimes bringing the technology to a next technology readiness level after we have finished our work in clean sky. The second topic I'd like to indicate is the synergy label and focusing very much on what Magda has said before. We have at the moment 10 so-called synergy labels, clean sky synergy labels in place. Um, and those are projects which are either complementary to what we are doing or sometimes there are even projects which are on our reserve list where our funding was not sufficient anymore to fund them. Uh, and I think that's a great asset because those projects sometimes, the, the second winner uh, is, is, a, is, a, is a project with a lot of value, a lot of expertise, a lot of knowledge. Uh, and, and those projects uh, can't be sometimes funded because we don't have the funding available. And then this synergy label and the smart specialization strategies locally at regional level will help us uh, to bring those projects to life um, and enriching our, our portfolio. And I must say, in, in, in all of those cases, this label is not awarded uh, lightheartedly, uh, but we are working uh, based on independent evaluations. So we are looking at each of those projects. Uh, we are evaluating the impacts um, by our own people, but as well by independent experts. Um, and I think that has really uh, a substance. It's not, not just a project which comes on top of the things which are, which are there. And I think uh, what is very important for the regions, as I understand it, from the regions, um, it also provides very valuable technical inputs uh, to those um, because we are helping them to assess the impact. Uh, we are helping them to assess the market uptake afterwards uh, so that they don't just get um, bottom-up projects from a local party, but they as well get a top-down uh, understanding uh, what, from a European perspective, what the value is. And I think that's really an added value we are providing there. A couple of examples uh, out of uh, from that list, and I think we have some examples which are more focused on national levels and some others which are more focused on regional levels. At national level, I'd like to mention the uh, Czech Republic national call, um, which was the first national call funded by ESIF, uh, complementary to a work program of uh, JTI, of a joint technology initiative. Uh, secondly, on a, on a state basis, uh, the Romanian national call uh, called Complement uh, Horizon 2020, um, which is a continuous funding scheme uh, to fund complementary projects in uh, Clean Sky. At a regional level, uh, two regions um, which I'd like to highlight today, one is Campania in the south of Italy, a dedicated budget for aeronautics projects dedicated to priorities which have been set in the Clean Sky 2 context. And the other one, Occitanie, um, in the south of France, uh, also a project which is directly connected to our priorities. What we also do is, in this context, uh, as part of the MOU, we are offering technical assistance um, in the priority uh, definition uh, locally. So we are offering that assistance, uh, and lots of those regions are making use of the competences which have been uh, developed over time. Um, and we are also helping them and supporting in this local prioritization exercise, uh, which, is, which is very beneficial for the local environment, but also for us. And I believe it's a good example of a win-win. Uh, the win on our side because we get additional competences, we get additional projects, uh, we are accessing competence which uh, would have been not accessible to us. And on the other side, the regions, uh, the countries uh, are contributing, and uh, we are contributing to their success, uh, we are contributing uh, our expertise uh, to what they do locally. 
I think it's a bit early probably to talk about Horizon uh, Europe, but uh, as there was so much uh, discussion uh, uh, going on there and is going on there in the Commission, let me uh, give you a little bit of an outline on uh, how do we look at synergies uh, in the context of Horizon Europe. Um, as you may know, uh, there is a clean aviation partnership uh, is being proposed by the European Commission in that context. It's currently under discussion with the member states um, uh, as well with the European Parliament. So the process is ongoing, uh, led by the Commission uh, over the next months. Um, and the primary objective has been set as deep decarbonization. I think was also a big uh, part of the speech of uh, Carlos Moedas just before. Um, and the focus uh, of a potential a new clean aviation partnership uh, under Horizon Europe uh, could be the deep decarbonization of aviation. Um, and the clear focus which has been set by the Commission is impact. So if that partnership is going to come, impact is uh, going to be a big, big point. Uh, and uh, the partnership or potential partnerships are evaluated against that impact. And secondly, uh, leveraging synergies. Uh, and there, the circle is closing again in comparison to uh, what I have been saying on Clean Sky 2. Uh, and we have been now starting to think a bit about uh, if the partnership may come, uh, what, what could we do in terms of synergies? And I think uh, we have identified uh, a title, Innovation Architecture, where we start to discuss with our JU colleagues, um, being at uh, uh, BBI here today, but also the others like Excel, uh, like Fuel Cell Hydrogen, um, uh, the other colleagues there, in terms of how can we leverage the synergies uh, among ourselves, uh, but also with regard to the member states and the regions in Europe. And I think we need to bring that then to the next level. And I think this is something we need to think about uh, within the European context, but also between Europe and the member states. Uh, because the challenge, this deep decarbonization, so taking aviation, taking CO2 out of aviation completely, is such a challenge which can be only achieved when we are working all together. And I think we will have to rely on the competences which are locally. And I have uh, uh, indicated here that in this context, uh, we would need to speak about a leverage factor of probably 10 uh, in comparison to what we have been doing in Clean Sky 2 in being able to really achieve that, that, that goal which we, which we have been given uh, uh, in, uh, in this Horizon uh, Europe context. I'd like to summarize. Um, Clean Sky 2 uh, has achieved significant synergies with ESIF, with regional uh, or national calls. Um, and in case the Commission will decide, um, together with uh, the, uh, the, the Parliament uh, and the uh, Member States, that there will be a partnership under Horizon Europe, uh, the level of required synergies uh, will have to be elevated to the next level. And, and our ambition is to multiply that ambition uh, and, and, and the level of synergies by a factor of 10. And in order to achieve that, I think, and this is a point, uh, those synergies is not just signing an MOU, it's not just signing and providing a synergy label, but it will require to work, will require to work together to define common technical roadmaps. It will require to work uh, in defining common potential calls, uh, common demonstrators. Uh, I think it doesn't come free of charge. I think we shouldn't make a tick in the box, sign nice agreements, uh, uh, celebrate uh, its, its workload. Uh, and that workload needs to be put together by, by all the parties uh, who, in the end, I believe, commonly will uh, benefit from that complementary work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Axel. Uh, we are all dreaming as to how we can roll out research results. And I think this is really an excellent uh, example how research can be brought to the regions, in fact. And it's not only about replacing the funding from, your, from your Horizon 2020 through the structural funds, as you have seen, is also about complementary action, further develop the research projects that have been initiated in your place in the regions to roll out the research results. So I think this is another great example of uh, how to uh, ensure synergies, not only by replacing the funding resource, but doing with different funds something else, in fact, to further roll out create demonstrators, to create new business models. So thank you very much for this excellent example. <coughs> now, 
<coughs> let us see how uh, the joint undertaking for bio-based industries goes about all these issues. And Philip Mengel will be the speaker. Please, Philip. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Wolfgang, for giving me the floor. And uh, uh, thank you for your presence uh, as well uh, today on this session dedicated to uh, Synergy Label, but also the signature of the Memorandum of uh, Understanding with the EBRD. Allow me to start uh, as well by thanking the European Commission, and particularly the GRTD, its Director General, Jean-Éric uh, Paquet and Kurt van der Berg, for taking the initiative to organize uh, an event of uh, such a calibre uh, today. So thank you uh, very much. Despite I'm sure that some of you in the room, I know some of you in the room already know what BBIJU is about, but let me make a, a very short introduction. Uh, the BBIJU, Bio-Based Industry Joint uh, Undertaking, was part of the bioeconomy strategy approved by the European Parliament in 2012. So it's not BBI2, as Clean Sky2, so it's the first generation of, uh, of uh, BBI today. So it is, uh, as well as uh, Clean Sky, uh, an institutionalized uh, public-private partnership, and from our side, between the European Commission and the industry represented by BIC, the Bio-Based uh, Industry uh, Consortium, with an overall budget of 3.7 billion uh, euros to invest in a research and innovation uh, program under Horizon uh, 2020. So BBIJU is part of the JU family, but, but with a unique element uh, compared to uh, the other. It is the only one dedicated to the bioeconomy. That's the unique uh, part. And bioeconomy is a sector absolutely uh, critical for Europe's future and uh, policy uh, priorities. BBI works towards three targets. The first one is de-risking investment in research and innovation, of course, but also in industrial deployment. Second, to organize the value chain, the so-called structuring effects. And the third target is to help reach uh, the critical mass as well the so-called mobilizing effect. It's key for the bio-based sector, whose actors also fragmented already generate today in Europe 700 billion turnover and 3.3 million of direct uh, jobs. That's already the reality of today. During our years of uh, operation in BBI, I'm very happy to say that BBI has been recognized as a high-impact uh, initiative with a growing, growing and growing participation again in our last uh, call. Innovation actions funded by BBI-JU and in particular the flagship uh, projects at TRL uh, um, uh, 8 were absolutely instrumental. We have today in our portfolio uh, nine flagship projects that received around 200 uh, million of grants from uh, BBI but leveraging 1.2 billion euro of uh, private investment and also generating more than 3,000 direct jobs, more than 10,000 indirect uh, ones, all well spread across member states and most of them being in rural uh, area. It is a clear sign for the future of the sector in our uh, continent. But among the things I have already mentioned, BBIJU has also the task to achieve maximum impact of the initiative through synergies with other funding uh, instruments and programs. And this is exactly why we are here today for the launching of the BBIJU Synergy uh, Label Pilot. This BBI Synergy Label will contribute to enhance synergies between BBIJU activities and member states and regions in the field of bio-based industries, thus reinforcing the implementation of existing bioeconomy strategies in the European uh, territories. The BBIJU Synergy Label is awarded to BBIJU uh, proposals that were deemed to be of high quality but did not receive funding due to budget limit. This synergy uh, level should enhance the recognition of the organization participating in the proposal and facilitate the search for alternative uh, source of funding provided by other EU organizations, EU member states, regions or other possible funding organizations. Twelve proposals are awarded with the BBIJU Synergy uh, Label and uh, some of the corresponding consortium are here uh, with us uh, today. Seven, exactly. The BBI Synergy Label Pilot is a new initiative that recognizes the value and excellence of demonstration and flagship actions proposal submitted under the BBI Call 2018 and qualified above the quality threshold. 
on top of initiatives undertaken by several EC services, like the EU Circular Bioeconomy Investment uh, Platform, and by big bio-based in, in, in bio -based industry consortium, like the Regional Platform for Investment, BBIJU, uh, approached different funding organizations to ensure the recognition of the proposal awarded by this uh, synergy label. So we are also uh, honored to have uh, here with us uh, today Stefania uh, uh, Cruceru uh, from the EBRD, European Bank for Reconstruction and uh, Development, with whom we are going to sign a memorandum of understanding to promote uh, investment in the bioeconomy. This MOU aims at providing a general framework for cooperation between uh, both party parties in promoting innovation and sustainability in the bioeconomy uh, sector. BBIJU will pursue collaboration of this sort uh, also with other funding instruments to ensure the full deployment of the bioeconomy across uh, member states and uh, region. All of this is happening at a very important political moment for the EU. Only a few days ago, we heard the political priorities of President-elect and read the mission uh, letter of uh, Franz Timmermans. I would lie not to say how happy I personally was to see the tremendous emphasis of President-elect gives to a more sustainable future. I am sure you all uh, seen. I'm, see, I, I'm sure you have all seen that the very famous by now European uh, Green Deal has to be presented in the first hundred days of this Commission uh, mandate. Since its, its inception, BBIJU has been contributing already to kind of a green uh, deal. Only to name a few of our targets, first decrease of greenhouse gas emission by 50% by 2030, second, create up to 1 million green jobs by 2030, in particular in rural and coastal area, and third, to replace at least 30% of oil-based chemicals and materials by their bio-based uh, equivalent. May I remind uh, you that BBIGU is the largest and uh, most uh, ambitious uh, public-private uh, partnership in the world dedicating to achieving the circular uh, bioeconomy and getting Europe set for uh, its uh, even more sustainable uh, future. And here also, in the spirit of the panel today, I need to mention a very important point, striving into achieving a more sustainable future, aiming and protecting and improving our uh, environment, not, does not stem only from the fact that this is the right thing to do as a matter of just moral uh, principle. It is not only about greenhouse gas emission reduction, it's also about biodiversity, soils and uh, water preservation. It is the right thing to do, also as a matter of uh, rational choice because the environment and all green technologies linked to it will uh, create the basis for the new circular bioeconomy model in Europe and I hope also elsewhere uh, in the world. With very few words, this is what BBIJU has managed to do. This is what BBIJU has managed to combine, elevate EU industrial research and renewable resource potential in order to bring them into European green deals and ensuring job creation and competitiveness. And I mention all these elements together because one without the other is incomplete. And why is that? Because they cannot deliver the maximum of their potential and therefore the maximum of benefits for EU citizens and the environment. Thank you very much. Thank you as well for the BBI team for setting this. It was really a teamwork from program unit, communication, legal aspect as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Philippe, uh, and your colleagues from uh, the BBI joint undertaking for this initiative. I think as a chairperson of the governing board of the joint undertaking, I really support and endorse these efforts. Now, before I will give the floor to Stefania, and she will tell us how the uh, European Bank for Reconstruction and Development can provide complementary or uh, additional support to these projects, uh, you will have certainly noted that our two last speakers were supposed to talk about the synergy label, but they couldn't abstain from making some promotion for their organizations <laughs> and the future of their organizations under Horizon Europe. 
Now, evidently, I will not pronounce myself on this question because uh, we are doing impact assessment, we are consulting you, the stakeholders, on all these questions. But permit me just a remark, I think, and still continuing our, our deliberation about providing impact and being impactful. I think that raises the question of how we govern research, how we govern research projects, and who are the players involved in research projects. And one conclusion of my uh, quite some years now in DG Research and Innovation is really that we need what uh, uh, Axel has referred to as cooperation, cooperation between academia, cooperation between business, but we also need this cooperation in scale and scope, in fact. And I think this is what partnerships deliver, be it, con be it uh, contractual ones, be it institutional ones, be it other forms. But it's this kind of governance, I think we should carefully consider whether this is not very important if we want to deliver results uh, for our business, for our society. So, after this remark, now over to Stefania. Stefania, please tell us, what can you provide us in terms of support? Thank you very much, uh, Wolfgang. Thank you very much, Philippe. Um, dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to be here today to represent EBRD. Um, yes, uh, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, um, we are committed to continue to scale up investment in energy and climate action. The European Commission is one of our key partners in delivering this very ambitious goal. Um, maybe a couple of words about the bank, uh, how we operate and, and what we do. We are a development bank, but uh, we, uh, and we have a special mandate from our shareholders who are majority owned by European countries. But we do have to apply sound banking principles to all the investments that we support. Having said that, of course, we apply a proper due diligence process to, to all the um, investments that uh, we want to support. But another thing which is very important for us is to make sure that we are bringing in <coughs> private sector, um, that all the investments are additional and that they have a, what we call transition impact. At EBRD, uh, investing in green economy um, and in transition to a low carbon economy is uh, core. Um, and we have so far invested uh, about 31 billion euros in uh, climate change mitigation and adaptation uh, projects. This is uh, meaning that basically around 40% of the annual business volume of the bank is directed towards uh, green projects. This is all across from energy efficiency, renewables, small scale, but also large scale, to resource efficiency and uh, water uh, saving projects and uh, environmental um, soil um, and air um, pollution remediation um, um, environmental remediation uh, projects. Our business model um, is not just to provide financing. Uh, what we bring in is technical assistance, uh, we bring in policy dialogue, and uh, we are committed to uh, forming collaborative partnerships um, and networks. That's why um, the opportunity to, to work together with uh, BBI joint undertaking, jo joint undertaking is, uh, is very valuable for us. And um, we believe that to working together, we can uh, bring uh, more investment to fruition on the ground. Our region of operation um, is uh, not the entire European Union, it is uh, only Central and Eastern Europe, the accession region and the neighborhood countries. And uh, this is a region where we see a lot of opportunities for the bioeconomy and um, um, industry. Um, however, we see a lack of investment, um, um, so uh, we are committed to work together with you at BBI Joint Undertaking to hopefully, um, you know, be able to, to, to bring our internal knowledge, the funding, the technical assistance uh, and, uh, and support companies to, to uh, get uh, their investments off the ground. Um, 
I would like to add a couple of points on, uh, on uh, the urgency of accelerating this kind of uh, um, uh, activities in, in our region. Uh, we, together with uh, other MDBs, have committed to uh, double the investments that we do in the areas of uh, climate change mitigation and adaptation. We want to further accelerate uh, support to uh, help decarbonize um, um, industries across the region. And what we can bring in is uh, de-risking, um, something which we believe is important in face of the many risks and barriers that uh, uh, this type of uh, projects uh, face. We can mobilize uh, other co-financiers to come alongside us and uh, we can use our, um, let's say, in-house technical expertise alongside uh, your expertise to, to look at these projects, to assess them, to improve their structuring and uh, um, with, uh, with our business model and risk-taking capacity, um, we are, um, we are hoping to see a few developments uh, uh, pretty soon. So that being said, um, we are looking forward for uh, um, um, the cooperation. We think this will be able to generate significant benefits for the local economies. Um, it's, uh, it's about mitigation, uh, decarbonization, it's about job creation, and I'm very uh, delighted and honored to be here today and represent the bank um, and sign this uh, memorandum of understanding. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stefania, for <coughs> This initiative of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development is really highly appreciated. <clears throat> so I think now it's almost your turn. I think our colleagues have really done a great job. They've well explained what exists in terms of synergy labels. They have rightly pointed to the big achievements and I insist both of PBI and, and the Clean Sky joint undertaking in areas which are decisive for European futures in terms of societal challenges, but also in terms of competitiveness. And I think you merit a hand. <laughs> so, now it's your turn. <clears throat> and uh, I think it's about the synergy label. But you are supposed to just provide statements. Evidently, if you have specific questions, you are also welcome. But this is your opportunity now to, to provide input also as to how we should conceive future uh, public-private partnerships, but also your ideas and proposals when it comes to create additional uh, uh, synergies compared to what we have just indicated to you. So I think please come in shortly. It should not be much more than one minute. Please let us know where are you from what you are about, not all, but in particular in terms of uh, your uh, job. So I think we have about uh, 10 minutes, and then we will sign the Memorandum of Understanding and the first seals of excellence for the joint undertaking, BBI. So who is first? Please. Thank you. My name is Anja Sorduña. I'm the executive director of Aspire. Uh, PPP. Uh, it's uh, currently a CPPP and we aim to become a co-programming partnership. So thank you very much to all the speakers today. Uh, I am very, very much interested to know much more about these uh, synergy levels because uh, we really believe that uh, the partnerships can really play a very good role, also the co-programming partnerships, on how to match the projects into different funding opportunities or financing opportunities through the banks mm. also, so that we deliver the impact. Because uh, Horizon Europe only supports up to TRL7, so I really uh, support that, and I also want to uh, get inspiration from my BBI friends or uh, Clean Sky colleagues also um, uh, on that. So I would be very happy to talk afterwards <laughs> on that. <laughs> But I really support it. I think it's very good. And, and I would like to also have it for us. Thank you very much. There is a nice cafeteria uh, <laughs> close by. Great. Are there other comments, please? Yes. Thank you. My name is Elisa. So, so my 
my name is Edith Herzog and I represent here Géant. Uh, Géant is the high-speed network uh, to interconnect research uh, and the data economy. And uh, we are not a PPP, we are an F F FFPA, yeah, the Financial Framework Partnership Agreement. And I'd like to ask about uh, if the synergy label will be entitled only for the European Partnership Agreements or the uh, PPPs, or it will be also for the FFPA part. And my second question that, uh, yes, I am very happy to see the zeal of excellence and the traditional, how to say, uh, experience with the synergies, but what's about the new one with the CEF program and with the, with the Connecting, Europe, uh, uh, Connecting Europe facility and the Digital Europe program? Because finally, and I think this is why it's so important for all of us, uh, that the, in the sensor-driven economy to interconnect the data, uh, will be not just something nice to have, but it will be a key enabling technology. Without none of none of the programs can fulfill their tasks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Edith. On the, uh, I will be very short. I think uh, what makes the specificities of 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 what we have discussed is that uh, I think every funding organization or every. Uh, uh, yeah, every funding organization is entitled to indicate what kind of projects they promote, even if they have not got funding for them because there is a lack of financing. I think what we have looked at the European level is really in the framework of Horizon 2020 that we think that we have an excellent review process in terms of uh, project selection and thus the uh, the 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 uh, excellence label, which is at the basis both for the seal of excellence and to the extent that projects are not funded, they rely on this, this kind of seal of, uh, this kind of excellent evaluation through Horizon 2020 uh, project evaluation system. But I think any, as I have indicated, funding organization, I think, has a kind of autonomy to single out those projects which are, uh, which are which they consider to be of, of, key, uh, of, key, uh, of a key value and of key importance. I think what is also important is that, in particular, when it comes to the, uh, the, the, fi the, 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 the finding of other resources, is that, in particular, if you look at the SME instrument, we have really a kind of similar objectives of the SME instrument under Horizon 2020, compared to what the smart specialization objective in structural funds is. So there is a clear uh, kind of uh, similar intervention logic, which also makes the seal of excellence easier, but we can certainly discuss. Are there other statements or remarks? Yes, please. Hello, my name is Tomasz Poprawka. I represent Polish Academy of Sciences, and which is a learning society more or less interested in really rather basic science. So with this, with this in mind, I would really like to ask whether there are some other ideas on developing the, the, um, um, uh, the, 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 the seal of excellence in terms of supporting, let's say, creation of the new centers of excellence, or whether any ideas on really supporting the frontier science, let's say, within the ERC. And the other thing is having an experience in, in, in really um, um, in the last couple of years on in implementing the structural funds. What, what are the ideas in the Commission on really um, you know, bringing this, the, 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 the structural funds and the Horizon Europe funding together? Because there are some you know, technical problems really when, when really where we would like to combine two sources of funding. Thank you. There is nobody else than uh, <laughs> so, Magda who will be best able right. to reply. So for the seal of excellence, uh, still already today, it is uh, provided not only to the SME instrument, but also to the Maris Lodowska Curie action. In that case, is uh, mainly the social funds that will intervene as alternative funding. And we have cases already of uh, support to the Maris Lodowska Curie grantees. And this is important as well to attract talents. So this is something that uh, some countries are using as well to attract uh, talents. And uh, to the ERC as well. So European Research Council as well, it will be soon uh, available. Teaming as well, it's in the process to be provided and there is actually even uh, easier because already for the teaming projects, uh, the managing authorities are aware normally already of the, of the projects uh, and they have already committed to, to provide complementary funding. So in this case, it's, uh, it's easier. 
In the future, uh, yeah, we are trying to, to align as much as possible the, the rules uh, where it is possible, in fact, uh, to be able to use uh, the same eligible costs uh, and the same uh, aid intensity. So we are working as well uh, for that, uh, either when it's alternative funding or it's combination of funding, and to have exactly as much as possible the same uh, understanding. So there is good progress done as well uh, between services. Uh, we are still uh, fine-tuning because uh, every Everything that we do now in terms of discussing with our colleagues will then have to be uh, reflected in the regulation. But definitely this is a very good moment, so it's a plea to everybody to, to, to come up eventually with your own ideas eventually on how this would be the, could be the, what could be the solution to certain problems, because we are finalizing now the, the implementation of, uh, of it. Thank you, Mark. Please. Andrea Bos from the Netherlands, Ministry of Education, Culture and Science. Um, I, I see this as very positive developments, also to use the synergy labels within partnerships. Well, I was wondering, do you feel that the regions already make use of the opportunities that the seal of excellence and the synergy labels provide? Or are there still particular barriers that, that make mm -hmm. that difficult that we need to tackle when we work towards Horizon Europe? Mm -hmm. Maybe a short word from Axel and from... Uh, from uh Mark, from very short, please. I, I think the it, it's a question of knowledge about the existence of the seal. I think that that's the first thing which is probably preventing people from moving ahead. And while we we have 18, uh, there are many more regions in Europe which obviously could participate there. I think that's the first thing. And the second thing is probably also that the the amount of work which should come with it. Uh, some see it rather like. Uh, uh, also, to be critical, a public relations tool uh, to sign something, uh, uh, I think, but this is not enough. I think we need to do the next step uh, and provide common roadmaps. And I think that additional work which comes on top and which is usually also constraining because if you do an, a, a common technical roadmap, uh, then you have to give a bit away. Uh, it's, 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 it's getting towards each other and, 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 and working with each other, uh, where you have to give a bit away, a bit, a bit of autonomy in brackets. And, and this is something which is also a point which needs to be recognized and realized by, by the people. And this is maybe preventing as well the willingness to engage. And very shortly from BBI, what you have pointed out is part of the pilot, because maybe I was not fully clear in my presentation. That's a pilot. We have already identified some possible hurdles, and that's something we have to, to look at now during the phase of implementation. Okay, a last question or a statement, please. Yeah, Wil van den Tweel yeah. from DSM. Um, sitting on the front row, so uh, we had a flagship proposal. And when you look at flagship proposals, yeah, uh, there you are looking at proposals which are very concrete. And I'm asking myself, what does and how can Synergy label help uh, those flagship proposals? Uh, because you are looking, you already have uh, a consortium you are working with, you want to uh, build a plant uh, in a certain location. What, what can uh, the Synergy label there add? And, and for example, uh, a question I also had was uh, um, the tools you as a European bank have, is that only loans or are you also thinking about equity and uh, is that a possibility? Okay, so for the, the, the BBI Synergy label, we decided to focus only on demonstration and flagship uh, action. Of course, there is a lot of interest also for research and innovation, but it's uh, more earlier in terms of uh, maturity. And we focus on demo and in particular flagship because there we have a well-identified project, a place, a leading company, which makes feasible to establish connection with different funding organizations. But we know as well that flagships, I will not go into the technicalities, uh, for some uh, banks are not yet considered in Europe as bankable. Uh, so that's really part of the, uh, of the exercise, again, of this pilot to identify the right funding organization that can support this type of, uh, of project. But the advantage is that, I repeat, we have a well-identified location, a business plan, a company, a business case as well, and a potential uh, market. Thank you, Philippe. Stefan, do you want to add something um, this? At the EBRD, we make use of um, a wide range of financial instruments um, in 
general, if we are to, to look at the projects that we financed so far, I think we use mostly debt, but we, we also actively invest equity. Sometimes we invest both debt and equity. When the risks are fairly high, um, we are also seeking to bring in uh, other financiers. So we are looking to syndicate or to work with another uh, multilateral development bank. We can work together with EIB, with KFW. Um, it's useful to make use of concessional co-financing. Um, so many times uh, we are um, uh, trying to mobilize resources from the European Commission or um, some of the uh, global climate funds that can support projects. The question is, of course, if these instruments, uh, if we have access to these instruments and if they are eligible for certain countries or regions. But we do have um, a lot of uh, specialists. We have sector specialists, we have climate change specialists, and we have also um, people who uh, work on donor co-financing and we can bring in all this expertise to look at uh, specific proposals. So we are really looking forward to have something concrete to look at together with our bankers and our donor co-financing units and we hope to um, this exchange of information to work from both sides so from BBI and the flagship projects and the synergy label projects to come to us so we can have a look, review, assess whether we can invest and what would be a right structure for us. And what we want to do is also whenever we have projects, clients coming to the bank um, interested in investing in this kind of project, that we can support them with technical assistance and uh, help them prepare projects, approach PBI, apply for the grants, so that it's, uh, it's a mutual, uh, let's say, collaboration. Uh, um, but the, the end game here is really to, to see actual investments happening on the ground. Um, in our case, it's uh, EU 12 region that we can invest in. So Western Europe is not in our mandate, but uh, everything from, uh, let's say, um, Poland, Slovakia, Slovenia, and uh, going east, um, we, we can cover. So please come and talk to us. Thank you, Stefania. So this brings us to the end of uh, the session. I really would like to thank you for your presence and for your interest and for the discussion. I found it extremely fruitful and interesting. I hope it has given you envy to still continue to contribute to uh, Horizon Europe. The consultation is still open. If you feel that you should contribute to the design and you have good ideas, please let us know. Uh, for the rest, we can now advance to the signature of the memorandum between BBI and uh, EBRD. So do we have music and... Uh, Thank you. No. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. So Chai please, Chai. and I would like to congratulate those who uh, will receive now the, the seal of excellence of PPI. Thank, Thank you very much for your interest and your participation. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Wolfgang. C can I ask all speakers to sit on the first row? Because at the end, of course, you will take a picture. Can I sit here? All the, the group.